Thank you. So this will be an update on the status of our little chemical reanalysis of the stratosphere. Uh, I think I talked about this a little bit two years ago with our virtual meeting, but uh, this was not completed then yet. So we now have the sort of the full reanalysis, meaning, you know, covering the entire period, MLS period. SCREAM stands for uh, Stratospheric Compositional Reanalysis of our MLS. This is uh, parts of our team here. Uh, and before I get to uh, the nitty gritty, this is kind of like an um, overview plot of uh, something that I would really like to study in detail. It essentially shows um, anomalies uh, of uh, several different species in temperature and water vapor, HCl and ozone from screen at selected pressure levels for the entire period of the reanalysis. And what well, well, this is highlighting here, the, the ones in color are uh, greater than three standard deviations from, from the mean uh, either way. That in the recent period, we have a fair number of uh, what do you classify as extreme events, you know, from some dynamically driven anomalies to um, uh, the SSW in the southern ha uh, hemisphere in, in 2019, then extremely deep ozone holes in, uh, or la or long lasting, I should say, in 2020 and 2021, and the Hanga Tonga eruption that we have this, this enormous amount of water vapor here that's showing. So whoever says that the stratosphere is kind of, you know, the sci stratospheric science is done is, is simply wrong. There's plenty to, uh, to study. Um, the stratosphere has a way of surprising us, I guess. So this talk talks about uh, SCREAM, uh, chemical reanalysis, what, what is it? Chemical reanalysis, is a, as I see it, is a long multi-year record of atmospheric composition data assimilated with a system equipped with an atmospheric chemistry model and constrained by uh, assimilated meteorological fields. In our case, that would be MERA2. Um, this is a short description, well, not so short, of how it's done. We are assimilating five species from MLS, ozone, uh, water vapor, uh, HCl, HNO3, and N2O. This list can be expanded, but this is what we have in, in this reanalysis. We also assimilate ozone from OMI. Uh, there is some caveat about HNO3 not being assimilated at uh, high latitudes for technical reasons, and we can talk about this. Uh, of course, all those species are important for stratospheric chemistry as well as for transport studies. Um, we have developed a, something that we call Constituent Data Assimilation System, or CODAS, uh, that is capable of assimilating pretty much any data, um, any retrieved data, with or without averaging kernels, uh, column data, point measurements, and so on. It's, um, it's pretty robust. The resolution is the same as MERA2. Meteorology, meteorology is constrained by MERA2, and we use a, a full uh, stratospheric chemistry model that's called Stratcam. It's, it's a family scheme. Uh, I can talk more about this. It, it doesn't include the troposphere. So don't look at the tropospheric composition in SCREAM. And the data are publicly available. So this is just an example of two fields uh, at 500K uh, isentrop. Um, some snapshots that, that I picked. This is ozone. This is, um, this is HCL. Uh, scream fields with overlaid MLS observations at the same time. So you can see that for ozone here, there is a very good agreement as you expect. You know, this is what data assimilation does. Basically propagates all this stuff and builds a picture of, of what the field mor morphology looks like. Uh, for HCL, you, can, you see some discrepancies here. Uh, the MLS HCL observations are noisier than, than ozone. Uh, and this, this can be seen here, but this noise doesn't really propagate into the analysis because that's another thing. You know, data assimilation sort of works like a, like a filter. Uh, we've done an extensive validation of this product. This is just a snapshot comparisons with ASFTS of all the five species for the entire period, just zonal mean. So the top two rows show uh, Scream and ASFTS uh, co-located. So SCREAM is co-located, it's sampled at SCREAM uh, observation locations. 
profiles. The top two rows shows that basically, you know, the field morphology is the same as you would expect. There's nothing particularly surprising here. This is the difference. And the differences are, I'll just say, they're exactly what you would expect from different known differences between ASFTS and, and MLS. Uh, it goes for water vapor, also other species here, uh, including ozone here. You know, something more interesting. So just um, just a few snapshots of how um, how we can represent different scales um, uh, with this product. So starting with small scales, uh, this is a comparison of um, three scream species with uh, uh, Gloria measurements from Polstra campaign. Again, Soren Johansson, thank you for pointing me to those data some a few years ago. Uh, so this is a single flight, and the reanalysis is subsampled at this uh, flight at the observation locations here, and this is from, from the observations. Of course, we don't get all this detail that you can see in the, in the Gloria measurements here because of the resolution we, we're, we can't really expect to, but the overall um, morphology of, of the fields is, is very similar, and this, this is even true slightly below where we assimilate anything. The, 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 those dotted lines here show the bottom MLS level that we assimilate. Um, this is an example from a paper by Gloria Manny. She looked at transport uh, during the breakup of the polar vortex uh, in 2020. There was a very strong polar vortex uh, with lots of ozone depletion, as we know. And this is kind of um, uh, snapshots of uh, two different um, uh, isentropes uh, of the evolution of the polar vortex in N2O and water vapor. And what you can see here is uh, basically, a, well, that's straight from the paper, high resolution view of the 2020 polar vortex breakup and the fate of vortex remnants. Uh, in this case, we can see that there was a strong confinement even after the breakup. So this is just an example of things that we can do uh, when we have this uh, relatively high resolution field informed by data. Uh, another example here is the uh, Australian, the aftermath of the, of the uh, Australian New Year's uh, wildfires in 2019-2020. Uh, here I did something, this is basically from uh, Doug Allen's paper, he had something similar but from data. Uh, I looked at Scream, so those are basically cross sections here through the through the blob of the, the material that got ejected there by the fires. I'm um, looking at temperature, um, water vapor, HCl, HNO3, N2O, and, and ozone uh, anomalies. Kind of anomalies in the sense I'm removing the zonal mean here. So as, as we know, this, um, this blob of material of smoke was, was so big and of course caused localized heating that it led to the formation of something that, that people go swirl. Uh, the, the whole thing starts rotating and forms a little anticyclone uh, within which uh, all the material is basically confined and stays there for a long time, for several months. Uh, integrity or the composition gets maintained there. So this is uh, shown here in PV. This is an anticyclonic circulation. We have enhanced ozone hole and enhanced N2O, uh, and water vapor and N2O, um, that probably comes from the fact that we, we're looking at a tropospheric intrusion, essentially, of uh, air with tropospheric composition, uh, low HNO3, low ozone, and low HCl. Partly this is transport-related, uh, and in part it's chemistry. As we know, there was some very interesting, I mean, we heard yesterday, there was some very interesting uh, HCL repartitioning happening within that plume. And this is also represented here. This is uh, now a longer view. So this is actually the entire reanalysis, ozone, HCL. Detrended anomaly is a function of um, uh, time and equivalent latitude on this uh, 520K potential uh, temperature level. Looking at HCL, you can basically see all the things that, that we know of and love and uh, written papers about uh, variability of the northern, uh, northern as well as southern hemisphere polar vortex, 
uh, the, uh, highlighted here, the strong ozone depletion in 2020 here. And also this, this is HCL, uh, again from the Australian New Year's fires. Uh, very, very depressed HCL, uh, lower than anywhere else in that record. This is the, the chlorine repartitioning. And then we have Hang Hanga Tonga from Scream. This is actually a, um, a frame from an animation that, that, that I made, but I was afraid it wouldn't play necessarily. It, those things have a way of going wrong. So uh, this is the water vapor enhancement from Tonga um, at 650K. Uh, basically everything that is typical for the stratospheric moisture is in white and everything that is in color is, you know, this additional water vapor. You can see details of this, like this little patch here over Madagascar um, and associated profiles here, uh, reaching almost 100 parts per million, where we normally have something like five parts per million. And this is represented in screen. The overall increase uh, in water vapor mass in the stratosphere from, calculated from screen was about 10%, which agrees with the study by, uh, by Louis Milan. Uh, this is... Uh, zonal mean kind of evolution of, of the water vapor enhancement from um, February, then May and October, we can s and so on, uh, all, all the way to the April. This is April this year. So actually it's last month. Starts very localized and kind of spreads in the horizontal, but also assumes the shape, you know, associated with the brewer Dobson circulation, uh, with the upwelling, the tropics and downwelling, downwelling elsewhere. Um, and finally, we have uh, this water vapor, enhanced water vapor essentially everywhere in the stratosphere by now. Um, this is more or less my last slide. Uh, trying to, <laughs> so those are, um, again, uh, anomalies at 26 hectopascals of uh, ozone and N2O. And basically what is, this is showing is the main signal here is the QBO. Uh, in both those species, as, as we know. This is uh, limited to 45 south, 45 north. But then you can see that um, in 2022, we have this rather pronounced dipole um, in ozone and also in N2O. And this is, this is consistent with an anomalous circulation that uh, was induced by this additional water vapor from Tonga. This is very much work in progress. I just wanted to show something like this, that, that we, we're doing this too. Um, as I said, the product is available online on guest disk. This is a NASA uh, repository. Cool. Uh, it's now we have everything through, a, uh, through March, I think. Uh, every few, uh, we update that every few months. Um, and there is a description validation paper in uh, Earth and Space Science. And this is basically my talk. So the main conclusion here is that we think that a marital screen can be a useful tool for studies of stratospheric composition. We are preparing a new reanalysis, um, would be called R21C, uh, reanalysis of the 21st century which will be kind of up, updated GMAO, a meteorological reanalysis. And with that, there will be a, a chemistry component as well that will be a significant extension of, of this. Um, there is also a spark reanalysis in the, in the comparison project that I'm kind of involved in uh, that is now in phase two, uh, which will include um, intercomparison of chemical reanalyses. Uh, um, and this is kind of, you know, we need more MLS and things like that. Um, don't kill it. Thank you.